My name's Ian Storer, I'm a lecturer at uh, Loughborough Design School. Now I've had about 10 years experience in industry being a designer and I've been lecturer here for around about the last 10 years as well. The research I'm, I'm interested in really is how we go about making designers better and specifically the areas of uh, modelling in all of its various forms from sketching through to CAD, uh, engineering drawing, physical models that whole continuum, that raft of different techniques you can use to, to describe form, but also the, uh, the importance of the form itself and the making of meaning. Trained in the, the late 80s and early 90s, and if you think back then, really the um, sketching was pretty much all you had, unless you had a lot of money to buy the CAD systems, which at the time were, were very technical and largely impenetrable unless you're also a computer programmer. Uh, the things you were stuck with really are engineering, drawing and sketching. Um, it's changed massively because now we have all of the digital domain, there are um, programs such as Illustrator, Photoshop, there's the myriad different permutations of CAD from um, sort of surface model based things such as Alias to more of your solid modeling, um, solid works per engineer and so on. So there's been a lot of change which impacts hugely on how we teach these things. I think a lot of the techniques are quite well argued that they are essential parts of a, a designer's arsenal, but the, uh, the research I'm doing really is how do we best teach that? How do we introduce students to all of those techniques? When to use them? What's the best thing at the right time? And to try and remove some of this issue of the various techniques being in separate silos. I think traditionally things have been taught in here's some sketching, we'll do some CAD, maybe some engineering drawing. There's been quite a lot of discussion in the research about the role of sketching. Is this a, an antiquated thing? Do we still need to be doing this? And it's a fairly good question. Now we have all of these other ways of doing things. Do we still need to sketch? But in discussion with some of the leading consultancies in the UK, pretty much the first thing they mention is the sketching ability of students. They don't want to employ anybody who can't sketch. Now, maybe this is just a hangover from the 80s that the people in positions of power had to do a lot of sketching and it, it's what they're after. But for us, as we're training, hopefully, world-beating designers, we have to make them employable straight away. So expert sketching is, is part of what our students have to do. And a big part of my research is enabling them to do that. I thought there was quite a... Um, a gap between people doing CAD research and people doing sketching research when really they're all researching essentially the same sort of activity just using different media. So really what I'm trying to look at is to teach the students to embrace the sketching as a very similar process to model making by hand or CAD modeling. And to facilitate that if we look at the things that are that we can't change. So engineering drawing, there are certain set of regulations you have to follow to, to produce your engineering drawings and CAD packages, well as millions are invested in setting them up and how you operate them and so on. And there's certain modeling strategies that you have to partake in. So what I'm trying to do, the sketching, teaching that I do, is pretty flexible. We can teach it in a number of ways. But what I've tried to do is link as strong as I can the engineering drawing and the CAD through the medium of sketching. trying to look at what were the barriers to, to understanding and to be able to, to design products and communication of the ideas that were in the students heads was a huge area that we needed to look at. Lots of people could think of something but they had really struggled to, to show it to anybody else. So what we've developed essentially are, are a series of, of stepping stones of ways of communicating what's on the inside, articulating that so they can get feedback, we can work in groups. And, and so on. It can facilitate the advancement of ideas, essentially. Um, now, a big part of what we're trying to come up with is, is this understanding of, of the meaning of form. And when you look at uh, saturated markets, something like the, the mobile phone market, we've got hundreds of products that look very much the same. So what, what are designers of the future going to do? What are they going to do next? And it's the meaning of, those, of the form that's really going to have that product differentiation. So in the ways that, that fashion design, as uh, you know, people express all sorts of the things that they're going to wear, that designers 
can use a, a, a similar sort of method in a way that the product that they're coming up with is projecting a certain message to everybody out there. So what we're trying to do with the, um, the analysis of existing objects and this making of meaning strategy that we've come up with really is to, to give them the tools to thoroughly think through all their designs and to have some sort of ammunition that things, products do have a meaning and they can articulate that and synthesize it appropriately. Okay, what we have here is a, a design by a third year student for uh, a children's watch that encourages social play. Now, what you can see, referring back to the, some of the uh, modeling strategies we talked about earlier, here we've got um, some elevational views, referencing really back to the, the engineer and drawing work. We've got uh, sketching used here in largely a digital format to communicate some uh, construction, how this thing's all going to fit together. We've got over here um, just a sample taken from a sketchbook where the students coming up with a design. You can see we've got some annotations here where they're just discussing it with themselves and with other people. Some use of sketching to help describe some of the, the ways of operating it. And what we also have, if we look a bit further down here, it's a product for children. So some of the imagery here, the, this making of meaning work that we talked about, if we pick up on some of the, the really appealing, innocent face on the front of the bottles here, and we look back at the product there, he's captured a lot of this, this sort of non-threatening and this engaging form. Especially, I guess, if we look at some of these as well. We've got cute characters. If we look at the shapes, we've got very soft, smooth shapes. There's not a lot of hard edges in that work there. So we look back to the project here. Again, he's used, he's learnt from the collective imagery here and applied this directly uh, into this design. Um, so there's part of the sketch development work. And then the final design here we can see is uh, described through 3D CAD models, which have then been used to create rapid prototype models and uh, final uh, evaluation prototypes. Moving on, again we can see examples of a lot of the same sort of things I've talked about. We've got some of the sketch development work here, some of the, the engineering drawing work just on that part there. And again, a lot of the, uh, to ensure that the product communicates the, the right sort of feeling, the, making the right meaning, it's collected a whole range of images of inspirational work that if we start to analyze and we look at some of the shapes involved, we have um, sort of extruded around a, a corner shape here. Um, there's a lot of, of quite interesting geometry when we get in close. And we look back at the product up here, you can see a lot of that has been embodied in the three-dimensional form. So it, again, the student is using this sort of continuum of modeling techniques. We've also got some three-dimensional, some physical modeling here, where they're trying things out, testing things. Um, using the final model to actually do perform some ergonomic evaluation. Okay, now over here again we've got more examples of the same kind of thing. So here we've got some design thinking and evidence. So he's used a lot of sketch techniques just to, to work through different ways. How is this going to connect together? How will we open it? What about the straps? There's a whole range of stuff happening over here. Here we're looking at a little bit more on some sort of structural thoughts, how is he going to attach to the bicycle and again he's examined a whole range of objects here to provide the correct design inspiration to base all of his design on. So we've got a lot of objects that, that physically move, it's a, a cycling product, we looked at cycling, at sort of slightly armoured protective uh, gear some beautiful Oakley glasses there. Looking at some of the, the surfacing and, and the bright colour eye dents on there, which we can see embodied in the final design here. So again, using that sort of continuum of uh, 3D models, sketching, um, and evaluation prototypes.